Good evening, JSBC, virtual conjugates. Welcome to another exciting Wow Wednesday, Word on Wednesday. We're excited to have you here with us today. We're going to talk about, um, uh, I believe, an interesting subject. Jesus, the loving caretaker. Oh, and he is our caretaker. You better believe it. Wow. Hmm. I want to begin right away because people are going through so much and, and that seemed to be the, the trend and the norm today. People are experiencing uh, change, experiencing life altering situations that uh, sometimes frustrate, could be confusing. But I want you to know that God hasn't given you the spirit of, of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. And I guarantee you that he's not the author of confusion. If there's confusion in your life today, it didn't come from him. <laughs> it, it certainly didn't come from him. So let's get right off. Let's Let's uh, get right off into the word uh, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Now, let me remind you. Now, you know you need your Bible. If you don't have your Bible, go get your Bible. Go get your Bible and highlight and, 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 and begin to put some landmarks that you can go back to. You can go back and they'll help you in a time of need. It may even serve as a guide for someone else that's going through a situation and they just need a little direction, a little encouragement. Well, let's go. <laughs> Starting at verse five, it says, likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elders, unto the elder. Yea, all of you, and this is what I want to highlight. Yea, all of you be subject to one another and be clothed with humility. Such a need today for people to be humble, to, to, to clothe themselves with humility. It says, for God resisted the proud and he gave it grace to the humble. God resisted the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And then he says, verse six, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And <laughs> verse seven, casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Now, I, if you don't mind, I'd really like to read that in the Message Bible. I want to start out with um, uh, King James translation, but I want to read that in the Message Bible. I think it's so, so vital to where we, we are trying to go today. But I want to start with verse, verses 1 through, through, uh, through, through 7. It says, I have a special concern for you, church leaders. I know what it's like. This is the message now. I know what it's like to be a leader in own Christ's sufferings 
as well as the coming glory. Here's my concern that you care for God's flock with all the diligence of a shepherd. Not because you have to, but because you want to please God. Not calculating what you can get out of it, but acting spontaneously, not bossly, telling others what to do, but tenderly showing them the way. And verse 4 and 5, when God, who is the best shepherd of all, comes out in the open with his rule, he'll see that you had, you've done it right and commend you lavishly. And you who are young must follow your leaders. But all of you leaders and followers alike are to be down to earth with each other. For God has had it with the proud but takes delight in just plain people. Now the sixth and seventh verse, pay very, very close attention to it. Be content with who you are. And don't put on airs. God's strong hand is on you and he'll promote you at the right time. Live carefree before God. He is most careful with you. Now, <laughs> you know, I said, I, I, that's the seventh verse, but I just got to throw this in. The eighth verse, um, where, where it talks about he gets the last word. He said, keep a cool head, stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better than to catch you napping. <laughs> Keep your guard up. <laughs> Keep your guard up. Come on. Oh, church, come on. But cast all your cares on me. Now, let's, let's look at this here. As the enemy, uh, you know, we, we know him. I don't want to give him too much credit, but, but we know that uh, uh, Satan especially... Uh, likes to challenge you when you're gaining ground. And I've talked about this before. But he's no match for you if you refuse to give up your ground and you stay in the fight and you continue to trust God, to depend upon him, and you serve him uh, with, uh, uh, with your whole heart, committed, totally committed to his will and his way. And don't get bogged down, caught up with all the cares that uh, life presents. Uh, casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Casting all your care. Now, if you cast it all on him and you give it to him you can live carefree but let's look at uh, the, the Greek word translated cares uh, it is the word miromna uh, and I'm, I, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly or not but it, it's uh, M-E-R-I-M-N-A, which means anxiety. Now, the English definition is distress, which implies uneasiness of mind, brought on and caused by fear 
or danger, of danger, or, or misfortune. What if? What if? Has gotten in the way. And it's taking over. And it causes you, can cause you, to be overwhelmed. Overwhelmed. Care and anxiety, as we know it, is a part of the curse. That is not our portion. That is not our lot in life. But we find ourselves, when we take our eyes off of Jesus, full of it. Stress is a killer. Take you out. Care and anxiety, as I stated, is a part of the curse. And it's all, if you don't know, I'm going to tell you it's fear-based. The phrase, fear not, appears so many times in the Bible. Fear not. In fact, occurs uh, about 95 times in the Bible. 72 times in the first covenant, the covenant, covenant, and 23 times in the second. And as we look at this, uh, we see in John, the 14th chapter, verse 27, it says, Let not your heart be trouble, troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now the same thing is said in different ways all over the word of God. Jesus said this now in John, the 14th chapter. Let not your heart be troubled. Now, if he is telling us to let not our heart be troubled and our heart is troubled, he wouldn't tell us to do something that we couldn't do. But we have to rely on him. He says, uh, let's read the verse the entire verse. Peace I leave with you. Look, let's look at it in its entirety. Peace I leave with you. Now if you have peace, his peace, you don't really need trouble or troubled heart because that peace that surpasses all understanding will engulf you. It'll just take over, kick in. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. So you got to take a piece of his peace and deal with your troubled heart. Not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. And then he seals it by neither let it be afraid. So your heart can be troubled and it can be and you can be afraid as well. But he's telling you, don't buy into any of it. Now let's analyze some other very important scriptures in light of that particular verse. Jesus said this about care or anxiety or worry in Mark's gospel, the fourth chapter, verses 18 through 19. Let's take a look at it. Go ahead and ready yourself. Let's take a look at it. It's important for you to see. To see. The Bible says, oh, taste and see <laughs> how good God is. Oh, taste and see. Uh, let's chew on this. And these are the are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. Mm. Now notice the 
uh, the specific reference thorns. And then he said, our Lord and our Savior said, care and anxiety entering in choke. Choke. What? The word. Choke the word. So the word is very important. It's extremely important that you spend a decent amount of time in the Word because that's what's going to sustain you. That's going to help you to maintain, to be maintained, to be sustained. So, so in other words, the cares enter in. Well, I asked the question to myself, who let them in? Who let them in? It's certainly not something you, you invite in, but who let them in? The cares. The cares. He cares. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. Now, I believe I have a degree of insight here. The Lord allowed me to see something and I don't know why my mind went to Peter. When Peter asked, the Lord, on that storm, because storms come, and they come uh, and they interrupt our lives and the, the sanctity uh, of things. And they come when we're on our way to carry out uh, a, a mission or, or something that God has um, uh, um, allotted for us. And storms come when we're headed to the other side. When we are going to the other side, when we're doing, trying to do what God has called us to do, and then a, a storm occurs. And But Peter was in the boat. He was with the other disciples, and he decided, because, uh, you know, the storm came, and he saw... They all thought it was a ghost coming to, 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 toward them. But Peter said, if it's you, Lord, because, you know, sometimes you're really not sure. But he said, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come. If it's you. And Peter stepped out of that boat. I imagine there was a lot of confusion in that boat, a lot of fear in that boat. He stepped out. Because the Lord said, come, one word, come. And Peter stepped out on that one word. And I'm telling you this evening, you can step out on one word from God. If you're hearing God this evening, I want you to know you can step out and you can walk out of confusion. You can walk out of dread. You can walk out and you can Walk on water. Other words, that which was impossible for you to get over and to walk over and to walk on, the Lord will make it possible for you to walk through it. But you got to keep your focus. You got to keep your eyes on the Lord. And Peter, he stepped out and he was walking on water. You know, and he, he was walking to our Lord, toward our Lord, and, and um, unfortunately he took his eyes off of the Lord, but he did walk on water. He did do the impossible on one word from the Lord. And when he stepped out, stepped out on the word, you can do that this evening. Step out on the word. Step out on the word and trust God, but keep your focus. Learn the lesson from Peter. Peter took his eyes off of the Lord, began to sink. And that's what happens to us when we step out 
and, and we are trusting God and, um, and, and then uh, we lose our peace because we lose sight of the Lord. But his one great thing, the Lord never lost sight of Peter and he has never lost sight of you. I'm here to tell you, you can do it. You can make it. You can walk through adversity. You can walk through a, a, a sickness, disease, and on the other side, there's healing, there's health. You can walk through uh, what, what, what caused you to be impoverished. You can walk through it. On the other side, there's wealth and success. You can walk through failure. And on the other side, there's success. You can walk through it. Get a word, but Peter, now, now there are people who have tried to walk on water. But I'm not sure they got a word because some of them didn't make it. Hello, they didn't make it. But Peter, he walked on water because he was trusting the Lord when he stepped out. He was trusting on that. He was stepping out on that word, but, but he took his eyes off of the Lord. Keep your focus. Took his eyes off the Lord. Keep your focus. That's my word to you this evening. Keep your focus. You can make it. Amen. Whatever you're going through, whatever storm you're in, you can make it. But the great thing here is when Peter began to sink, he cried out. He, humility now, humbled himself. He cried out, Lord, save me. Can you do that? Cry out to the Lord this evening. Lord, save me. And isn't it amazing? He was just <laughs> right there. When, when he cried out, Jesus was right there to catch him. Right there to catch him. And he'll be right there to catch you. Cry out this evening cry out this evening. Now let's get back to this here because there's a lot of good stuff, good meat in this here. In Mark's gospel, the fourth chapter, verses 18 through 19, and these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, but the cares of this world, and that's what I wanted to apply to, to Peter. <laughs> Peter, <laughs> Peter, Peter got confused because he saw that, he saw the wind, the waves. He took his eyes off of Jesus. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word. And it, become a, and it becometh unfruitful. Notice the reference to the word thorns. He said care and anxiety entering in choke. Don't allow anxiety, worry, and care to choke the life of the word. There's life in the word. The word, let the word sell it. Be it unto me according to thy word, Lord. Come on, say it. Be it unto me, Lord, according to thy word. Not according to my circumstances. Not according to what I, 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 I'm afraid of or what I'm going through, my circumstances. Be it unto me according to thy word, Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word, Lord. Now, there's been a lot of debate about the thorn in the Apostle Paul's flesh spoken of in 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 7. In fact, I'll read it. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, many people, many, uh, e even some paraphrased versions of the New Testament says that God gave Paul a thorn in the flesh. But that, 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 that's not possible. Look at it again. It says, the thorn in the flesh was the messenger of Satan 
to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, do you do you think for one iota or one minute that God would send a demon to keep his child, someone he loves, from getting into, into pride? No, 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 no. Mm -mm. To keep someone from getting, no. Mm -mm. No, no, no. That's, <laughs> woo, no. Mm -mm. No, I heard someone say, <laughs> that's like sending a, a dog to God the meat house. Hmm. No, no, no. Mm -mm. No, no. No. Mm -mm. No. The answer is no. And, 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 and the explanation, I believe, is right there in chapter 11, when it starts with verse 23. And it reads down to verse 28. And let's read it. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more in labor, more abundant in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in death off. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. There, thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day have I been in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Verse 27. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. And verse 28. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Now, now let's look at it again in, in uh, uh, Mark's Gospel, the fourth chapter, verses 18 to 19. And look at it again. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Now do you, I hope you see this now. He was doing what the apostle Peter, Peter was talking about in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 7, where it states, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you. In due time, casting all, casting all, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for, for you. Our Lord is our caretaker. Now, the Amplified Bible, let's look at it. The Amplified Bible, let's look at this verse. Uh, the Amplified now. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, set aside selfish pride so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time. And verse 7, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, 
all your concerns once and for all on him. For he cares for you. With deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. He is our caretaker. Come on. I say he is our caretaker. My God. You can plainly see the truth here in verse 8 and 9. And it says, Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. But now verse 9 whom resisted steadfast in the faith. Now you gotta <laughs> stay on guard. Hello? Yo, don't, don't get caught napping, sleeping. And it's been said, unfortunately, sometimes it looks like the church is sleeping when we should be awake. Amen. Whom resisted steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, Paul said, because you know, Paul wants to get this monkey off, off his back. <laughs> you would too. Paul said, I asked the Lord three times to get the devil off of me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. Now, if the Lord put it on him, why would he be asking the Lord to take it off? Hmm? Just think for ourselves. Paul said, I asked the Lord three times to get the devil off of me. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. Now, notice, the Lord did not say, no, you have to keep this thing for a while. He just said, uh, come on, get it now. Come on now. This is, this is some good food. My grace is sufficient. In other words, you take care. Get him off. You get him off. My grace is sufficient. Now, how can we be sure of that? Remember, you, we must compare Scripture with Scripture so that let's, let's get back to 1 Peter chapter 5, which continued as we continue reading, beginning with verse 5, and you read it through verse 9. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility, for God resisted the proud. Wow. And give it grace to the humble. My grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. What you're dealing with right now. Now you've probably compared yourself to a number of biblical characters. Job could have been one of them. Paul another. But just remember now how God rewarded Job. Double for his trouble. Come on now. So get ready for your double blessing, your greatest reward, your best is yet to come. Amen. Amen. Now, let's, let's go back. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisted the proud and give it grace to the humble. Verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Come on, exhortation. Hello, are you with me? Exhortation. Are you with me? Exhortation. Mm. And then verse 7, casting all your care upon him. For he cared for you, casting all your care upon him, 
for he cared for you. And then be sober. Stay alert. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the, the, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Take yourself off of the menu. Whom resisted steadfast in the faith, verse 9, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Now, if you go back to what Jesus said, and, and this is it's commanded in uh, John the 14th chapter, verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace. John, St. John, the 14th chapter, chapter, verse 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. So what, what, what is being said here, what is being said here is that you have everything you need. Everything you need to fare well, to do well, to live whole. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Then it says, and this, 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 is a, this is a command. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. This is not a suggestion. This is a command. And, and, and you is the understood subject. You let not your heart be troubled. You take the word. Take the word and stand on the word. The word translated trouble means to render anxious or distress. Don't you allow yourself to be anxious or stressed. In everything by prayer, by, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. He is a, God is a awesome, loving Father. And Jesus is a wonderful, loving caretaker. So what's it, whatever is trying to stress you out or whatever you're anxious about, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. And he will exalt you in due time. See, now, what, what happens here is many times people are embarrassed, are ashamed, but that's not Jesus' way. That's not his way. You, 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 you humble yourself and, 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 and go to him. Come to him. All ye that labor and, and are heavy laden, go to him. Don't allow yourself to sit back and, and be held back because you're, you're embarrassed or you're ashamed. Because that's not the way of our Lord. He shows us how we can act on his word by his spirit. Grace will back us. His grace is sufficient. Grace will back us when we act on his word. And as power, as we, as we become receivers, as we act on his word, as we act on his word, and once and for all, cast that thing. I said, cast it. Cast it over on him and leave it there. Cast that burden on him and leave it there. And then, as, as, as they say, uh, as we say in the Bible, then here comes the good fight of faith. First Timothy 
chapter 6, verse 7. Fight the good fight of faith. Who? You. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold of eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Now, what and where is this fight? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 5. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The enemy is going to do everything he can to talk you out of your victory, to get you to take a stand off of the word, choke the word. He's going to come against you in a fierce way, but you take your stand. And you said, no, it is written. Just like Jesus de defeated uh, Satan when, when, when those temptations, when that temptation, when he was tempted, he said, it's written. You take your stand on the word. You, and you can declare, I've cast down imaginations. Every high thing that has exalted itself against the knowledge of God, I have brought it. I'm bringing it into captivity through the obedience of Christ. Bring it into captivity. Casting down imaginations and every high thing. Imaginations now. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Now you remember when Peter was walking on water, he could imagine himself sinking, going down, drowning. Although he had stepped out on the word and he was walking on water, he was accomplishing his mission, which was to go and to come to Jesus, to get to Jesus. Isn't it amazing? Sometimes we can't get to him, but the Lord can get to us. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Casting down imagination and every high thing. So I start pulling them down. So I'm pulling them down. Casting down imagination and every high thing. Come on now. So I start pulling them that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now you can do that. If, if you couldn't do it, the Lord would not have asked you to do it. Hello? Hmm? Let's say you cast your care. You're dealing with finances. It's a financial situation. It could be a domestic situation, other, another kind of domestic situation. But let's say you're, you're casting all your care of, uh, how you say, a negative financial report. But you're going to cast it on Jesus. Up until now, you've been holding on to it. You've been trying to figure it out. It's not working. You've been considering what if this, what if that. And now you want to cast it on him. You've been thinking that there's no way out. You've been worrying about it. And it's been constantly on your mind. The enemy constantly whispering to you. <laughs> now, and you've been thinking about it, worrying about it, day in and day out. You get up worrying about it. You go to bed worrying about it. Picking it up, day in and day out. You wake up during the, during, during the night, torture. Now, the important thing to realize, because it doesn't matter what, what it is, 
I just used that particular thing. I just said finances. The important thing to realize is that what has happened, you have become habitual. You have created a habit of thinking about that particular situation. Now, it could be some other situation. I just used that as an example. What caused it? But now you're thinking about that situ situation, but what's the answer? What's the solution? You've been searching your mind for the answers and you haven't found it. <laughs> Hello, you haven't found it. Uh, you, 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 you've, been, you've been looking in the file cabinet of your mind, but you can't find it. It's not there. <laughs> you can't find it. It's not there. But not finding it and looking for it uh, creates even more 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 of a dilemma. Now, I say it's not there because the answer is not in your mind. But let me tell you where the answer is. It's in your born again spirit. I say it's in your born again spirit. You say how? Let, let, me, let, me, just, let me just share with you. Let me just share with you. I said it's in your born again spirit because the spirit of God who knows everything and his mind lives in you. First Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 16. His mind, God hasn't given you the spirit of fear, but love, power, and a sound mind. A sound mind. Let's look at this now. Let's look at it. It lives in you. Let's look at 1 Corinthians. I want to read that. Mm -hmm. Just bear with me. Uh, 1 Corinthians, the uh, second chapter, verse 16. 1 Corinthians, chapter 2. Here's the thing about, this is the Message Bible. And I'm going to start at, I'm going to really start at the 14th verse. Because sometimes you can't really see what, I mean, because they have dipped it, it's all together in the Message Bible, but I just want to read it in that because uh, I think it's important. The unspiritual self, just as it is by nature, can't receive the gifts of God's Spirit. There's no capacity for them. They seem like so much stillness. Spirit can can be known. On, spirit can be known only by spirit. God's spirit and your spirits in open communion. Spiritually alive, we have access to everything God's spirit is doing. Come on, did you get that? We have access to everything God's Spirit is doing and can't be judged by unspiritual critics. Isaiah questioned, is there anyone around you who knows God's Spirit? Anyone who knows what He's doing has been answered. Christ knows and we have Christ's Spirit. Christ lives within us. That's why I declare, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in 
the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in and of the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in and of the world. I say greater is he. So he's greater than any financial dilemma, greater than any domestic dilemma, greater than any physical dilemma, greater is he that's in you. Christ lives in you. Christ living in you. Hallelujah. So as you cast your care, as you cast the care of the problem over on him, you've looked in the foul cabinet of your mind and you didn't find it. Now, call on him. Try Jesus, the caretaker, the loving caretaker. Try Jesus. I said, try Jesus. You've been here, you've been there, you've been everywhere. Now, settle down. All is not lost. Try Jesus. As you cast the care of the problem over on him, standing on that financial promise the word says, <laughs> we know Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, and we can declare it boldly, there is no lack for my God shall supply by every need or, or needs according to his riches in glory. How? By Christ Jesus. You see the Lord Jesus He's your caretaker. So boldly declare that he shall supply all your needs and thank him. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for supplying my every need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus and begin to declare. And if you're having other challenges, even on your job or in your home, Begin to declare that he is a provider. He is a protector. He's a day and night watchman. Hmm. Boldly declare. And then repent of the sin because you have to turn. It's a turning away. Repent of, of that sin of worrying and unbelief and doubt. And refuse to touch this thing any longer because you've given it to him. You've given it to him. Then, then go a step further. Bind the hand of the enemy. Bind the devil with the mighty weapons of the name of Jesus by the power of the blood and the word with the aid of the Holy Spirit. And the moment you catch yourself drifting and going back over in, 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 in the wrong lane about what if, huh. the moment you catch yourself thinking like that, taking on that care again, cast down that imagination. Cast down that imagination. Nope, I'm not going to go there. I, I have given that to the Lord. I cast it, that care on the Lord, casting all your care. When you cast all your care. Now, I, I just asked my, myself, what happens when you don't cast all the care? Then they'll sneak back on you and then they'll compound and add like compound interest. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> so cast all your care on him. Unload. <laughs> Dump it on him. <laughs> Woo. And don't tolerate even the smallest thought. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. I know you, you need help. I know when I've dealt with certain things, I, I've needed help. And I ask the Holy Spirit, help me. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. Because it's so easy to drift. Amen. Ask, ask him to help you so you won't be allowing those evil thoughts that you can't make it. You can make it because with God all things are possible. You can make it. Hmm. And you can live whole and you can live bold. But you got to trust him. Amen. I say you got to trust him. 
And then, as I close, um, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 9 says, And I just want to share share this with you because I believe this is an awesome word that will help you. I've been trying to be very practical. I'm not trying to use my own experience because it will take up too much time. <laughs> so I'm just using the word because that's your foundation. Amen. If I could share my experience and you could say, well, that's you, Reverend. That's you, Pastor. <laughs> and then you exclude yourself. But the God that I serve, he's no respecter of person. So here we go. Be careful. Anxious for nothing. But in everything. Now, I want to ask you something. Is there anything about everything here that you're missing? But in everything by prayer and supplication... With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Tell him. When you get up in the morning, tell him what kind of day you, you want. Declare and decree what kind of day you, you're going to have. His grace is sufficient. Oh, don't, don't get up. Oh, another day. Oh. <laughs> with that kind of attitude. Change your attitude. <laughs> oh, come on. Change your attitude. <laughs> and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, come on now, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are of good report. If there be any virtue. And if there be any praise. Think on these things. He's telling us what to think on. And he will help you. Think on this. Those things. Which ye have both learned. And received. That's verse 9. And heard. And seen me do. And the God of peace. Will be with you. Listen. You can make it through anything and everything. When God is with you. Oh my God. I don't know where I would be. If the Lord was not with me, I, I know I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today if he was not with me. Oh, my God. Exchange those old thoughts. You got to clear out the closet. <laughs> you got some old stuff you can't wear. <laughs> it's out of style. It's out of season. It's, it's not in vogue. Fear and worry is not in vogue for you to wear. Worry is not in vogue for you to wear. Not as a child of God. Exchange those old thoughts, those old cares and worries with good and wonderful thoughts and praise to God. Hold on to Jeremiah 29, verse 11. God knows the plans. He has plans he has for you to bless you, prosper you, and not hurt or harm you. Hold on to it. Wow, oh, my God. And if you do these things that I've shared with you this evening, it'll work. It'll work. It'll work. It'll work. Verse 13 says, and I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. Rely on his strength. In fact, he said, when you're weak, say you're strong. Amen. Amen. So you're not 
excluded, you're included. God bless you. We love you. But can't nobody love you like he loves you. Stay in his loving care. He is an awesome, awesome loving caretaker. Mm. And by way, if you don't know him, I want to I wanna at least give you an opportunity to receive him. To receive him. But I want to speak this to, to, to someone. No matter what you've been facing. No matter what you've been going through. No matter what has stressed you out. Hold on to your peace. Don't you let the devil... Take another moment of your peace. Don't you surrender your peace. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will keep you. No matter what you face, God can do what you can't do. More than you could possibly imagine. And he can turn your situation around. He's turning your situation around. Do you hear me? I say he's turning your situation around. We're serving notice. On that dilemma. And those problems and those challenges. That you've been, been facing. That trouble you've been facing. No more. No more. With God, all things are possible. God's peace surpasses all understanding. And it dwells in your heart. It's there. We have to let God reign in every situation. He's been waiting for you to surrender. It's time to let it go and surrender it to the Lord. Amen. And have a God encounter. And have a God encounter. If you think about what the Bible says, you are an overcomer. In fact, you are more than an overcomer. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. The word of your testimony. So nothing should bother you and nothing should hinder you with the Lord on your side. Amen. Amen. Cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. So you start declaring that. You start declaring that. I cast not away, therefore, my confidence which has great recompense of reward. Amen. Now, <laughs> oh my God. The Bible also says a man thinketh so is he. Come on. Amen. We just had a mind alteration because we're going to change the way we've been thinking. We can make it. Now let me offer The best which is yet to come if you've not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if you don't know if you don't know this caretaker I want to introduce him to you today the Bible says when you come to him it says whosoever so you include it shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. So I want you to take him up 
on his word and ask the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. I take you at your word, Lord. I confess that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. And I invite you into my heart. I thank you for forgiving me of all my sins, for cleansing me. Forgiving me, your Holy Spirit, just as you have promised, for being my Lord and my Savior. Amen. I receive it, and I thank you for it, and I am your child, and you are my Savior. Amen. Now, I want to pray this prayer on your behalf. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the miracle of your wisdom and anointing, prosperity and healing. We come before you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we thank you for releasing your wisdom and your anointing and your prosperity in, 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 in the life of those who are listening. We pray today that you will feel afresh with overflowing of your healing power. And in the name of Jesus, in the power of your word, we take authority over every sickness and disease that has tried to hinder, hurt, harm, and bring danger. We bind every work of the enemy and we declare by the Spirit of God, no spirit of infirmity will prosper against those who are listening. And we thank you, Father, by the stripes of Jesus, that we are healed. Go ahead on, declare, I am healed. I thank you for restoring my health, for giving me power and anointing to overcome. I thank you, Lord God, for renewing my mind, my mind being renewed by the washing of the Word of God this evening. And I receive it right now. And I give you all praise, I give you all glory, and I give you all honor. And I declare, Amen. The Lord continue to bless you. And as you prayed that prayer, reach out, let someone know. I prayed with Pastor Hughes this evening. And I received Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. The Lord watch God and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon and enlighten you and be gracious, kind, and merciful, always extending and giving you favor. The Lord lift up his approving countenance upon you and give you peace, tranquility of heart, and life continually. Now unto him, is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or even think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end and just to confirm that God loves you through this word of knowledge your side your left side where it's hurting I speak healing. I speak healing. Where it's hurting, where it's been, it's, it's been, an, it's been, an, it's, it's been annoying you. I speak healing. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be set free. Call us and let us know. Give us a praise report to the glory of God. Amen but be healed and loose from that spirit of infirmity. Be made whole, amen. 
now, as always, peace, love, and shalom. Until we meet again, God be with you. Amen.